Hello there. My name is Ava. If you don't already know me, if you do already know me, then why hello there again. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build your very own Arduino Galvanic Skin Response Sensor. Whoa! Um, if you just want to do this for fun, or if you are doing this for a guitar lab project, or if I mailed you one of the ones that I made and it broke in the mail, this is going to be kind of everything you need to know on how to fix or build one of these by yourself. Um, a galvanic skin response sensor, or GSR for short, measures the electrical conductance of your skin through these little guys right here, and the electrical conductance of your skin is directly related to your emotional state. Basically, the more your hands sweat, the more like emotion you are feeling, and that measures kind of how much your hands are sweating, not to be gross, but um, this doesn't measure the type of emotion you're feeling, it will only measure like the intensity of that emotion. So when you see like the little graphs at the end, you'll notice that like when you're experiencing an emotion more intensely, the graph is higher versus when you're more calm, it's generally like flatter and lower. I'm using this to study kind of like how to reduce chronic pain through music therapy. You can use this for whatever you want to. It's often used in lie detector tests if you want to detect some lies. That could be pretty fun, but yeah, I'm going to show you how to build this guy. Okay, here's what the sensor looks like when it's all put together. And then we're going to do an epic transition, and BAM! And then here it is, in pieces! So, next I'm going to be going through each of the ingredients for the Gavanic Skin Response Sensor, kind of how you can get them, and then I'll be showing you how to put this bad boy together. All right, first up on our list is the Arduino Uno. Super cute. You're definitely going to need one of these. You don't necessarily need the Arduino brand. You can get other like Uno boards. I have a Laughbin Uno. You can also get Eligu Unos. They do the exact same thing. You can still program them through the Arduino software. They function with all other Arduino things. Um, just a little bit cheaper. Typically, these are not going to cost more than like $25. I think mine was like $15 because it was made in China instead of made in Italy, like the Arduinos. But they are open sourced microcontroller boards. You can plug them into your computer, store the code on them, and then when you have like your little circuit built or whatever, and when you like, you know, you can decide in the code what you want it to do and it'll store that code on there and stay there until you change it or like hard reset it. Next up on our list is this fancy little Arduino breadboard. This is optional. You can use a regular breadboard if you want to be boring and not adorable, but these fit so nicely on top of the Uno. They plug in so you can have you know, all of these things on the sides are where some electrical current comes in, where the data gets inputted or outputted. So it's kind of nice to have that like all on this cute little breadboard that lives right on top. These are also, you can buy these online. It's a little more expensive to buy like this fancy one instead of just a regular breadboard, but I do recommend it because it keeps everything more compact. It's less pieces like, you know, moving around. And also it does look so much nicer. Next on the list are wires. Um, these are, they're just wires. You can buy them wherever you buy your wires from. Um, I also have like a ton of wires. So if you need wires, contact me. The bunch of them came in my little kit. You only need four. I recommend two little baby short ones and then two of the longer ones. But it really doesn't matter. You can kind of do whatever you want. They're just wires. You can make them fun colors, minor fun colors. The color doesn't matter. They're just wires. Just wires. The next two ingredients are Velcro and like little pieces of Velcro. I use, let me show you, these little Velcro straps. They just, they're not anything special. It's literally just just Velcro, and you also need some aluminum foil. You can get aluminum foil from your kitchen, and it's perfectly fine. Aluminum foil is super perfect for this project because it's very conductive, so it's not going to really interfere with your data, with the resistance. It's also super cheap, super light, and I had some in my home, so that's why I used aluminum foil. 
and the velcro is just to like strap it to your fingers so you get you can like tape it to your fingers every single time but i feel like that'd be a pain i'd recommend velcro just some velcro next up we have this little baby 68 nanofarad capacitor um these are super important to the circuit you can buy them online for like a few cents or you can steal them from wpi's department of biomedical engineering that is what i did they buy these in bulk and then give them out in bioinstrumentation and i just never returned mine and they didn't care i even took two and they didn't care they were like yeah that's fine um so they can't be too expensive the value specifically is 68 nanofarads super super tiny basically what capacitors are is they temporarily store electrical charge um and then kind of like release them later on in the circuit it's just gonna make it stronger better faster more powerful it says 68 nanofarads on it there's no way you guys are gonna be able to see that i can't even see it but it does say that and that's the one you should get next on the list is the resistor um, specifically, you want to get a, between like a 2000 ohm or a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. Anywhere in that range should be fine. Resistors are these little guys, they go in your circuit and they prevent the flow of electrical charge because you don't want like too much happening, especially like when it's going into your skin, but it's not that much electricity in your skin. You're not going to electrocute yourself on an Arduino thing. Um, resistors, they look like little, little peanuts with colorful bands on them. They could be blue, they could be, mine's brown, and it's got four little stripes on them. The stripes are for the resistor code, which is such a pain because, um, I think I might be a little bit colorblind because I can't really tell the difference between, like, red and brown and orange and also sometimes green and blue. So that might be something to look into, but for the 2.2k ohm resistors, it's going to be red, 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 and then gold. Gold is just like the tolerance. The first two are the first two numbers. The third band is the multiplier, and then the last band is the tolerance. So it's like plus or minus five ohms, I think, for gold. It doesn't matter too, too much for this application, the tolerance, because it doesn't need to be that precise. Anywhere between like 2000, 2500 probably should be fine. I also recommend if you have a bunch of resistors on you, like I do, just kind of test them out and see what works best for your values. You can switch them out kind of as you're testing it. That's what I did to see what gives you like a good steady range. And last but not least, we have the lovely Arduino USB cable plugged in, oh, plugs in over here to your Uno other end plugs into your computer this is what you use to upload the code onto it to plug it in and run the graph or whatever um this should come with your uno but if it doesn't you could probably buy it on like amazon or something if it doesn't i feel like you got scammed you should get an uno and it should come with one of these little guys all right and then now for the fun part so after you have all of your code uploaded we're gonna start actually putting together the sensor so the first step is to connect your breadboard to your Uno. It snaps in nicely like that, and all of the like um, little ports will line up. We're going to, I already put them together, and I don't want to take them apart, but you can just imagine what it's like to fold aluminum foil on the end of a wire in like the shape that kind of will like eventually fit around your finger. So you, I took like kind of like a long strip, kind of skinny, and like folded it around it a bunch of times, and then folded the edges so it doesn't come off. And then you just loop up the Velcro, and you stick it on there. It doesn't really need to be like secured in any way, and you want to be like super fancy. All right, and now we're getting to connecting your circuit. Your first wire is going to go into the five bolts. It is in this little like chunk it's labeled five volts. It's one of like the black parts of the breadboard, or you connect it directly to the Arduino Uno if you don't have the fancy breadboard connector. Next wire is going to be one of the smaller ones. You put this in ground. It's labeled GND. That stands for ground. It basically means like no, no charged. And you're just going to put it 
in one of the spots on the breadboard anywhere sort of like to the your right side um, just to keep things organized next we're going to take short wire number two and you're gonna put it a few spaces away from on like the same row that you put the other wire and you're going to connect it down to analog in zero you noticed in the code that we said it was like the input was going in through analog in zero which is why you want to put it in analog in zero so that's connected to there over to there so these are on this black one and this red one they're connected to the same row and the row above that we're going to add our little resistor and that is connecting these two so the way a breadboard works i should probably explain this if you don't are not experienced in breadboards so all of the rows yeah all of the rows like along like this are connected so the ones that are like horizontal all the vertical ones are not connected so like nothing's really going to happen between them so this resistor is what connects these two black and red wires next on the next two rows above the resistor now you're going to put your capacitor it'll just fit in there nicely so now it looks like this and then on your left hand side of the capacitor you got to make two of these you've got two fingers you put it in the hole right above the capacitor to connect it to there okay now i'm going to speed build it again but from a top-down view, so you guys can see it better. We already have it connected to the breadboard. You're going to place your first wire in the 5 volts down here, either in the breadboard if it's connected, or on the UNO itself. Next, we're going to take a small wire and go from ground, or GND, and you're going to place it to anybody over here. Another small wire. You're going to go from analog in zero or whatever you said in the code my code said analog in zero if you copied me and you're going to place it in whoever on the other side so these two wires are not connected yet we are going to connect them now with a resistor the resistor goes right above each of the wires so now this side of the resistor is connected to this wire this side of the resistor is connected to this wire and it makes our big happy circuit Next, you're going to put your capacitor right above it. Make sure it's lined up with the resistor, which I did not do. Beep, beep, beep. You can make its little legs smaller. And then it's connected now. Then you're going to take your second little strappy thing, and you're going to put it right above this side of the capacitor. And then you are all set. All right, and that's how you build your very own galvanic skin response sensor. Um, yeah, overall, pretty simple, not too bad. It's kind of a basic circuit, but it gets the job done, measures that skin conductance, and yeah, lots of fun. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe. <laughs>